Welcome back to the Innovate Series. I'm here today with Will Feimatea, the founder and director of Bond Technology Management. Will, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Jack. Glad to be here. I think we've been speaking about innovations and there's, there's very few companies that uh, are as involved with, with so much technical uh, innovation across a broad range of, of other companies and systems as Bond. So, you know, what does that mean for Bond in, in terms of how you approach your own innovations? Um, our innovations have largely been driven by opportunity. Uh, so I, I've, you know, have, having been in the yacht industry as an ETO for a long time, you, I think that helped me um, dramatically spot opportunity and innovation isn't doesn't necessarily always have to be you know a piece of hardware a piece of software i think our innovation to the industry has been in, in the services that we've delivered over the years so um you know when we first started there was no audio visual consultancy per se you know, in, in the industry in the yacht industry and so when i started bond <coughs> It was the first company to do it, so it was also a hard sell. Um, and now I think you, you know, there are a lot of other companies which have, uh, you know, spawned from that and seen that it's uh, required in the industry. And now it's, a, I think, more a question when you're on a new build: who do you use rather than why do I need one? Um, and then we, then we, I think we were the we, we were the first company then to uh, bring out shore-based support services for the yacht industry. So there was another innovation, which, you know, it wasn't a technical innovation. It was a service led innovation. And then from that, we did training. Uh, we the first company to do specific audio visual training for the crew. And so that was the first. So there is a bit of a history of, of innovation that we've done from within the company, which is service orientated. Um, the one thing that we did build, which I think was, well, it was innovation innovative because uh, it, you know, it also received a patent, US and EU patent as three of the engineers uh, and myself, we, we built Jetstream um, over, I think, over 10 years ago. And it didn't really take off back then because VSAT was so expensive. But uh, in recent years, now it's you know blossoming and it's being used widely in the aviation industry now. So you've got live TV on your laptop on a private jet. Has, has that made your job easier or has it also, you know, increased the expectation for, for what's possible, you know, that, that rapid increase in connectivity and speed? Um, well, it's made more things possible um, and, and with it, it's brought up different problems. So, so latency wasn't a, pro a problem uh, until the software applications became you know so big or were eating so much um, bandwidth where you know just surfing the internet and uh, emailing uh, the latency never came into it but with you know video streaming etc it became a bigger issue then the the demand and the consumption of of bandwidth became higher and so latency became a bigger problem so when you know everyone's looking forward to leo now with reduced low earth orbiting satellite mm -hmm. systems with reduced, greatly reduced bandwidth. So their innovation is taking another turn. And I guess that it, that could be the keystone that opens up even more technologies that are, are gonna be possible on board and, and, and the market's gonna grow even further. Yes, other services which are more reliant on um, low latency will become more prevalent. Well, the last 12 months has been a challenge for everyone, but uh, I'm just wondering what, what kind of strengths that's highlighted for you at, at Bond Technology Management? Um, it, it has definitely helped the ability for us to continue with uh, new build projects, ha having um, points of presence in Holland, you know, Amsterdam, in Hamburg, in Germany, um, Barcelona to a point for mm -hmm. refits and We've, we've had to juggle, of course, as, like everyone else has, um, the logistics of travel and travel restrictions. So, you know, uh, and then, you know, if you're coming back to your country, you're having to isolate. So then that person's out 
uh, out of circulation from the from a workforce perspective. So our I think what I've been very pleased with is our ability to mix and match guys from each office and not have to leave their country. Um, and not having to rely, yeah, not having to rely on one specialist that has to move around. You know, you've also got the Brexit implications and there's many things going on. So I guess having those independent hubs is, is, is a real benefit. No, that's, that's helped a lot. And what I'm also uh, proud of is that, you know, the, the company is in its 15th year now and our ability, the company's ability to give back to the, you know, in, in a, a time of, you know, crisis or pandemic such as this, is being able to give back to the staff also um, when we can. And uh, I think two weeks ago, I uh, said that um, uh, parents of um, parents who had whose children were not able to go to school because of you know government closure or closure of the school um, only had to do four days a week um, uh, for well, bond, think, or, or, or they could split that you know those hours between two hours a day or a whole day. But, you know, I, I was pleased that we were, you know, that we we're able to do that um, and not just focus on the bottom line. You know, we're, we're robust enough to be able to, to give, give that back also. Which that, I is think that's an innovation in itself because I think <coughs> we've all had to pivot in the way we interact with the way we approach the market and the, and the way we, we handle, you know, ourselves as, as, as companies. So I think that that's a, is a standalone innovation is pretty good in itself. Well, hopefully I haven't put too many employers under pressure now. Well, thanks so much for being with us, Will, and uh, we'll hopefully see you next time when we're down in Monaco. Great. Thanks very much, Jack, and uh, it was a pleasure to be here.